I've been really inspired lately by the soloing techniques of the grandfather of electric guitar, Charlie Christian. So in this lesson we're going to have a look at a very cool triad substitution lick that I found in one of his solos that you can instantly implement to get some really creative effects in your improvisations. Let's get right into it right after this. So let's take a look at a cool lick that I found out of Charlie Christian's solo on the standard Rose Room. Now if you want a downloadable PDF of this lick and all the exercises that I'm going to do throughout this episode, click the link in the description below this video. So you can basically learn this lick and apply it in your improvisation straight away. It works really well over dominant chords, gets a great jazzy sound. But what I want to do specifically in today's episode is to look a bit more deeply inside the nuts and bolts of what makes this lick sound like it does. Uh, because there's some really uh, useful concepts that Charlie Christian is employing in this lick that kind of underpins a lot of what he does when it comes to soloing uh, uh, in, uh, on his recording. So let's have a look at my whiteboard now and let's pick it apart. Here we go. All right, so the first thing that you'll notice about this lick is this very cool triplet rhythm that's used throughout. Uh, that's not really what I want to focus mainly on today, but just as an aside, it's very useful to practice rhythmic subdivisions like these triplets uh, uh, in, this, um, in this kind of context because it gives a lot of energy to your solo. As you can hear when I play this lick, it's got a lot of energy to it. So, but the, the main thing is I want to look at the harmonic aspects of this lick. So if we go to um, uh, the first bar here, uh, we'll see that uh, the bulk of this uh, is basically an F13 arpeggio. We can see it's missing um, the root most of the time, but it has, you know, the A, the C, the E flat, the G, and the D, uh, all the tones out of F13 um, and kind of doodling around with that. Now, once again, that, that's kind of interesting, but the real uh, nugget of what I want to cover uh, in this video is just these three notes, basically, uh, that's over the, the B flat 7 chord. So I'll just... Um, sort of put a bracket around those uh, where we have a C, an A flat and an F. Now this is simply a triad, okay? So um, triads are just uh, three note chords uh, com comprised basically of the root, the third and the fifth. And what we have here, I'll just write these notes out kind of from the bottom to the top. We have F, we have A flat, and we have C, and that equals an F minor triad. So let's play those three notes on the guitar as they're written at the start of the second bar there of, of what I've bracketed. So we've got uh, the eighth fret, we've got C, and then A flat on the ninth fret on the second string, and then on the third string, we have the F on the 10th fret. I call this like a staircase triad. It's very easy to remember this shape. It kind of looks like a staircase. And, um, and you know, you, you would think there's not much more to say about it. Oh, wow, it's a triad. But do you find it interesting that there's a B flat seven chord 
but Charlie Christian plays an F minor triad over it. Now you would have expected uh, Christian to play something like a B flat 7 arpeggio over it. Um, but uh, here's the thing, in jazz it doesn't always sound interesting enough to just play the chord that you're looking at on the lead sheet. You have to be a bit more sophisticated than that and that brings us to the concept of substitutions. So substitution is basically seeing one chord on a lead sheet in a progression and playing a different chord on your guitar. So it's not that much more complicated than that. All right, so here's this kind of staircase F minor triad up on the eighth fret of the guitar. Now I'm going to uh, show you what that sounds like in the context of playing over B flat seven. All right, so B flat seven will go in my backing track but I'll play, firstly I'll just get started and play like a, a B flat um, 7 arpeggio to kind of, so you can hear that sort of standard sound. And then I'll move to playing this F minor arpeggio over it. And what I might also do is, is a bit of um, manipulation with this triad because obviously it's a little bit boring just going, playing that over and over again. But I could say slide into the notes. I could do, you know, double chromatic uh, notes towards each note. I could also do that um, from above as well. I'm just, I'm just playing two notes above my target tone in the arpeggio there. Okay, so I'll try to kind of j jazz these up a bit, but let's have a listen to what uh, this kind of concept sounds like compared to just playing uh, the standard chord off the progression. Okay, so here's B flat seven. Now I'll do the F minor arpeggio. And I'll show you the standard arpeggio, B flat seven again. So that sounds more like an exercise or something, but this sounds really cool. Okay, so it sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? And it's a very easy technique. You basically just play this little triad shape, uh, but in the context of substituting over another chord to get some really interesting results. Let's have a look at my whiteboard again to work out exactly what's going on here. So this is basically a clever way to target the upper extensions of a chord. So uh, the problem is, is if I just play a B flat seven arpeggio over B flat seven, you know, I get things like the root, the third, the fifth, uh, and the, uh, you get the flat seven, but all those other tones, you know, they're the pretty boring tones, right? But check this out. If I instead superimpose this F minor triad over B flat seven, what do I get then? Well, I get uh, F, uh, you know, it's the root of an F minor triad, but if I think about it being in terms of belonging to uh, B flat seven, that would actually be the fifth. The A flat would be the flat seven. And the C would be the nine. So you can see that without having to think about it too much, if I simply play this triad over this chord, I target these quite colorful chord tones, the flat seven, but in particular the nine, uh, which, which is more where you wanna be when you're jazz soloing. You don't wanna always just stick around the, the basic fundamental notes of a chord like the root, the third, and, and the fifth, and so forth. You wanna get into these more upper extensions. And this is one of Charlie Christian's hallmark soloing secrets, basically, using these simple shapes, but superimposing them over alternative chords. Okay, so that's the theory, but now let's put it into practice. A great way to work on techniques over dominant chords like this is by practicing over a jazz blues progression, which is what I want you to do with me now. So here's the PDF for this lesson. If you haven't downloaded it already, you can do so, as I mentioned before, by clicking the link below this video. But uh, if we look past the first exercise, which is basically the lick that we've gone through so far, in exercise two, I've taken that triad idea and I've uh, put each relevant triad over the chords in a jazz blues progression. So you can see the first one here, we've got 
uh, the F minor triad over the B flat seven. Now, if we think about the relationship here, the F is the fifth of B flat seven. So the rule is basically this. I can play a minor triad from the fifth of a dominant chord, which enables me to target those cool jazzy notes like the flat seven and the nine. Okay, and this is what I've done here, F minor over B flat seven, and then B flat minor over E flat seven, because B flat is the fifth of E flat seven, so I'm just going to play a, a B flat minor triad from the fifth of this chord and so forth. So uh, it, it's pretty straightforward. There's not many of them. So now let's play this exercise together to run through each of these triad shapes for each of the chords. Okay, so pretty simple and not that interesting, but remember how I was messing around with the arpeggios before, putting those little approach notes in, slides, enclosures, changing the rhythms up a bit? Now let's try this again. I'll crank it up to a faster tempo and I'll show you what's possible by using this simple idea and being a bit more creative with it. And this is what I want you to try in your practice at home. So this soloing concept of kind of seeing one chord on the lead sheet and playing another is one of the cornerstones of jazz improvisation and it goes all the way back to Charlie Christian. So you can see that although uh, Christian's music is nearly a century old now, the concepts that are contained inside his music is so powerful and useful to jazz soloists even today. So I strongly recommend that you explore this line that we've covered today, but also other lines from Charlie Christian as well, and I plan to feature more of those by this magnificent musician uh, in upcoming episodes on this channel. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.